Well, I think the answer to that would be Vancouver in Canada. Um, that's always been a bit of a party piece with me, having been there in the 1990s and fallen in love with it at the early stage of my career and sort of thought then about going and living there. I didn't take the opportunity. Um, and I've been back a few times. I think it's the perfect place because it's a lively city. It's cosmopolitan. You've got the mountains and you've got the sea um, and you've got fabulous scenery all around you. And it's very diverse and multicultural. And all those things are the sorts of things that make me happy. So, yeah, Vancouver. Um, well, lots of things, actually. Firstly, um, a real variety of legal work. Um, it covers so many things, helping people to um, maybe move on and, and develop a new property or um, helping retiring partners to see a way through how they can retire and pass on to the next generation through maybe selling or leasing back and just helping people to sort of regularise their own kind of business occupancies. So for, from a legal perspective, huge variety. I think now I've been a lawyer for over 25 years and um, I started off my career working mainly in the commercial sector um, and then I moved into sort of supporting healthcare clients about 12 years ago and for me I've sort of found the area that I really enjoy um, supporting and I think one of the main reasons is because um, I'm dealing with people who are delivering a really really vital service and I come across a range of people and it's fabulous because you're actually dealing with um, individuals um, who are working to, de to deliver services, but they're also operating as a business. Um, and I think that's, for me, what I enjoy the most. Top three tips. Number one, which is a little bit of a boring one, but really, really important, is to make sure that all your property housekeeping is really up to date. So get everything out, title to the property, get it out of your drawer, dust it down, your partnership agreement, and make sure that it represents who your partner's current and how you expect to, to be holding the property. Um, include in that things like compliance, so health and safety, asbestos reports. So a real audit of what you have now, making sure that is um, as it should be. That's the first tip. The, the reason it's really important is it allows you to be in a strong, robust position moving forward for making changes that you need to make. And also, very importantly, CQC compliance. CQC are very hot on making sure that the property matters are as in order. Number two is um, succession planning. Um, so many times I, so we, I, I, I sort of talk to GPs who have perhaps, because they're so busy delivering a vital service, have forgotten maybe that they're a practice of four and three of them want to retire in the next two years. And they all own the property jointly, but they're, they're then worried about how they want, how they can pass on that interest. And maybe the, the new GPs coming through aren't going to be interested in buying in to the property. That's just one example so the thing is to have a very, very clear succession plan to think forward. And then you can think about how you make plans to, to, to adapt. It could be that you sell the property now to an investor and lease back, or you make active plans to recruit, make sure that you can get people in who can follow through the business interests that you need to make that work. And then the third one is strategy. Um, so primary care networks, those have been with us now, coming up for two years at Easter and a real emphasis on primary care networks um, is to, for networks to work together to develop an estate strategy. It's really important, firstly, to be ahead of the game and put yourself in a strong competitive position, but also important because there are um, moves afoot, I think, where um, getting any kind of financial help towards your estate plans will be linked to whether or not you've got an estate strategy in place. Really good question. Um, I've given it a little bit of thought, and I think 
probably what can happen very often, um, I mean, as lawyers, we have to be very careful about managing conflicts of interest and making sure that where you're advising a group of partners, you've got everybody's consensus before they come to you for instruction. Life isn't as clear cut as all of that. So you very often have a situation where um, you need to go and talk to a, a, a mixture of people who've got a very different approaches to risk. So and it's to, it's trying to explain to those people what is realistic to expect if they want to move forward with a new commercial arrangement. So an example of that would be um, a practice that I was helping a couple of years ago. Um, for succession planning reasons, they wanted to do a sale and lease back. So sell the property to an investor and take a lease back. And a number of the partners who would be staying in the practice um, going forward um, were very anxious about committing to um, a 15 year lease, which is pretty much the standard form that any investor would want. And they would wanted um, an ideal world scenario. And I completely understood that but it wouldn't be something that would allow them to achieve their aims. So the way that was that the reason that was a challenge is that basically the what they wanted to achieve in the transaction was simply not going to happen because it wouldn't um, be a, the commercially acceptable deal. So was to go and talk to the GPs um, to understand why they were frightened or why they were risk averse and to talk through why those risks really weren't risks and to help them understand why they could accept the, the less than perfect cotton wool situation and why that would be OK, and also to understand the different personalities. And the outcome of that meeting was that everybody felt a lot happier and they could move forward and come to a consensus. So the, the challenge there was managing different approaches. Um, wasn't necessarily the legal challenge, but it was the people challenge which obviously fed then through into how you could manage the legal problem. Fantastic question. Um, it's years since I've sung karaoke, which um, obviously sort of gives away um, what I do at the weekends, which isn't going to karaoke bars. But I think I would choose, it's a little bit cheesy, but I think it's one of those songs that reminds me of um, the summer when I was 18 after my A-levels and um, a summer holiday and um, I would choose Careless Whisper by George Michael. Memories of a really lovely holiday romance which of course didn't last but yeah one of those. 